Hi and welcome to another repaint video of mine. I'm Hannah from Hoodles and this doll will probably freak some people out in the end or I sure hope it does. That is the goal. I'm going to use this Nora Bloodgood as a base. Can we take a second and appreciate this coat? I need to make a pattern out of it and then make a Matrix doll. Anyway, I'm starting with preparing the head for making the mask. This doll's process was a bit messy in real life. I jumped between things and it was chaotic for a while, so I'm glad I can edit it into something that looks somewhat logical. I used Control Cast for the mask because it's lighter than epoxy clay but sturdier than paper clay. The clay is mixed one to one by weight and then I just smooshed it onto the doll's face to create the base. The base cured for 24 hours before I trimmed it and made the second part of the sculpting. This doll is another one made for a collaboration, a Chinese Zodiac Halloween edition collaboration, which included 12 creative and incredible artists. I was the only doll customizer, which was interesting. In the beginning we got a different Chinese Zodiac, and uh, I got the ox and made my Skooksroa, but she was looking way too kind and all, so I made this one instead. I like making masks for dolls, that means I can sculpt, but I can also paint. I would miss doing the face up. Here I'm adding some details with my exacto knife before leaving it to cure 24 hours again. Then finally I added the horns. I used many reference pictures making this one because I wanted it to look as real as possible. Then I thought of adding eyes. I didn't in the end because the eyes didn't look dead enough. The control cast around them looked good though. I'm pretty happy about it. Let's peel it off. And uh, yep, that was super satisfying. Like, ASMR satisfying. After some trimming of the edges, I added some final texture with my X-Acto knife. It is supposed to look like it has been lying around in the woods for a couple of years, so I made the pores quite big. Then it got some sanding before it was time for the paint station. It looks even better now. I use Schminke and uh, they do not sponsor me, I just really like opening this box. First I thought of mixing colors to get it off white but decided to paint with only white and then use pastels. I'm more used to that and feel like I have more control during the process so I painted away. I'm amazed at how well this paint covers the surface. After using the airbrush, I shaded with brown pastels. There we go! I felt like a layer of the wash called Strong Tone from the Army Painter would look nice too, so I painted a generous amount and wiped the excess off with a towel. For comfort, but mostly to protect the face up, I lined it with red velvet. I also added a nose chain before I put it to the side. The harness has to wait until after face up and hair is done. Speaking of face up, time to prep the head. I cut off the hair, scraped it out of the plugs with a flat screwdriver and then pulled the hair out of the head. Lastly, I cleaned the paint off with acetone. seen her mold before. This is pretty cool. Now she'll get a layer of MSC before I start painting. I start with the outlines of the eyes. This time I want one of them to be really open and the other one half closed. I used a bunch of reference pictures to get it right and in the end it looked pretty neat. There are 12 zodiac animals. The rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, rooster, dog and pig. They all joined a race held by the Jade Emperor, which is a god, and as a reward they all got years named after them. It was all based on what order they finished, 
The rat finished first because it rode on the ox across the river and then jumped away before the finishing line. So the rat has the first place and the ox the second. If you like anime and haven't seen Fruits Basket, please do. Fruits Basket is based on the Chinese zodiac and the feels are so strong. I've never painted wrinkles before so this was new. I used purple to shade to match the body. Then I gave the wrinkles on her forehead some brown pastels. I took my time and really figured how to paint the shadows since the eyes weren't mirrored. You can see that the left eye was shaded more in the outer and inner corner while the other eye has it more in the middle. I used a q-tip to smooth the pastels before working on the lips and the blush. Don't forget the nose! In the second layer I'm working on enhancing colors and starting to do some highlighting. This is when I finally start to see some potential in the face up, when I shade the eye with black pastels. It does a lot for the 3D feeling of it all, which I like. Here I'm using blue pastels in some areas before I make the wrinkles even more prominent. Now it's the third layer and I start with working some more on the nose. I give it some blushing, shading and lines. Then she gets some highlights over the lip, aka a milk mustache. Fourth, but not the final layer. Usually I would use acrylics and be done with it, but I wanted to build some more colors. She's supposed to be a bit demonic, so I painted a carving on her forehead. It's the kanji for cow. It felt fitting. Now we're getting somewhere, the fifth and final layer. Time for some acrylics. I took my time and care to paint some blood gathering in the wrinkles. It looked pretty cool. I added some veins in the left eye to make it look bloodshot. I wanted her to look animated, but pretty realistic, so I also added some thin blue lines.
and there we go, her face up is finished. Next is, well, <laughs> well the rest. Since I've done a lot of modifications lately, I thought I'd let this one be. Or not. Not this time. Sorry, not sorry. I wanted to give her a striking silhouette, so I decided to lengthen her arms and change her posture. The first part I did with the help of a wooden dowel. This already doesn't look very good, so we are on the right path. Time to fix the posture. I wanted her to slump, so I took a triangle piece away from the torso. Then I needed to lift the neck, so I did the same there. Time to assemble, which I did with a glue gun, before I sculpted with some control cast. After sculpting, carving, sanding and airbrushing, I used some dark brown pastels. I remember that I saw the sun for the first time in like two weeks or so and it made me super happy. It just shone on my workspace and all, it was a good day. Then I proceeded with the fingers. I wanted to elongate them and made a base out of plastic that I glued onto the fingers. Then I used UV gel, meant for nail art. It was an experiment, but using the glue gun would have been faster, easier and less toxic. So I'm going to skip the process. Don't do it like me. This, together with my matte black one, is my favorite nail polish. It is a little bit too dark to look like fresh blood, but it works. She is supposed to be some Wendigo-inspired ox monster, so I glued flocking and hair onto the body. The flocking is made from the same yarn as the hair. Before I leave it to dry, I use a cloth-covered vacuum cleaner to remove the excess. And then I just proceed with covering the uneven parts left after standing. Now what's left? Oh yeah, some wounds and Taoist paper talismans. I wanted the chain to go through the body because why not? So I drilled a hole straight through and then used some more blood red nail polish. Then to make the talismans I used some paper pieces dyed with coffee. I didn't try to copy the real thing, it would feel wrong to do so since they are sacred, so I made up some squiggly things. I usually don't give my dolls any background story, but this one is different. The concept is that she is a human possessed by a demon and people have tried to contain the demon, hence her humanoid look. They have been using spares to attach the talismans to her body, but the talismans are too weak.
now we're getting closer, she needs some hair and a skirt. This time I'm sharing how I make the hair from yarn, if that isn't interesting you can skip to 1817. I use a piece of cardboard, circle the yarn around it and then cut it. I have different sizes of cardboard so that I can make different lengths. Then, depending on the thickness of the yarn, I divide it into small sections. For this yarn, I divided them into bunches of three. Then they get tied to a metal hanger. Time for the brushing! I use another cardboard piece underneath because the comb is somewhat prickly and I don't want to ruin my table. Usually I do this on the floor like a monkey with my foot holding one end of the hanger. It's, it's like a game of twister honestly. I start at the end and work myself up. It gets quite fluffy, super beautiful already but for this doll I want it straightened. so shiny. Now I'm going to make wefts out of this before I can use it on the doll. This face is the weirdest when the hair is like half done. I drew the lines and arrows and then glued the wefts on. Time to make the harness for the mask. I did it the same way as for my Del Fox repaint. Took some styling after putting it on, but it looked fantastic. To give the fur and hair a wet look to it, I used Liquidess Gloss Varnish. Then I added some grass and moss to the body. The color scheme is mainly brown with some red, so I wanted to add green as a complementary color. Finally, I'm making a skirt. Nefira has the same body type as the headmistress, so I used her to make a skirt's waistband pattern.
After making the pattern and transferring it to regular paper, I trace it on my fabric. Here I used fall leather. I didn't think that my sewing machine would take it, but it worked pretty well. First I sew the seam for the front part, then I glued the dart intake. I should have cut along the line, but I didn't, don't know why. Then I hem the upper part and sew a seam. For the skirt part I used a scrap piece of sheer white fabric. I just messily glued it to the bottom part after hemming it and then sewed a seam. I learned this from a cosplayer to dirty the fabric to make it look authentic. I used pastels, water and some acrylic to give it some more texture and realism. Then finally it just needed a snap button and I was done. I'm so glad I made another doll for this collaboration. She became the possessed version of Skogsro and looks super creepy. I have also really enjoyed doing these more complicated modification. It has been so much fun. Right now I'm working on one custom for a private swap and one doll who will be given away as a present. There are going to be some sculpting going on but no heavy mods. Please head over and see what the other artists have made, I'm sitting here in awe of their imagination. Their illustrations and creations are really cool, I leave links to their Instagram in the description. So I started with this and after this whole process ended up with this. Yep, definitely scary enough. The mask is pretty realistic, the face up is a bit freaky and her skirt looks like crap, exactly how I wanted it. I'm going to add the other participants and Instagrams in the description as I said. Please do visit their pages. I hope you enjoyed watching this. The video became longer than I thought it would and I hope I haven't bored ya. But thank you so much for watching. Bye!